This is a third in a series of videos on direct questions, indirect questions, and implicit questions, forming and using them in academic writing. So I assume that you have already watched or know the material from the videos on direct questions and indirect questions. So let's move on to implicit questions. So as I was saying in the last video, in, uh, in some academic styles of writing, they don't like direct questions. They find them rather informal, and they prefer indirect questions. But there are even some varieties of writing where indirect questions are frowned upon, too. I was very surprised to learn this, and frankly, I think it's rather silly. But they are out there, so it might be useful to know how to put your questions as an implicit question. So how do you know if you're dealing with this kind of writing style? Well do a search in one of these papers for WH or perhaps the word how and uh, you'll find a lot of things that uh, are not question words words that just happen to contain WH uh, you probably get some relative pronouns like who and which but, um, but look and see if anything there is a question word and if not well it's probably using implicit questions instead uh, don't say that it's just not using questions because again there's got to be some kind of a question that the paper is trying to answer okay. all right so how do we make these implicit questions well we'll start off with the content questions again and the only rule I have here this time is let's get creative no rules about inversion or WH words or anything uh, you just have to use your knowledge of what words mean <laughs> in English and try to figure out some way of phrasing this without forming a question. So let's, uh, let's get started here. So the aim of this study is to determine how alluvial diamond deposits can be analyzed. So you're talk how, that's talking about manner, that's talking about methods. So maybe we can t change this into a, a word for method. So a method for analyzing alluvial diamond deposits. So that would work. Okay, to determine a method for analyzing them. The implicit question is, how do we do it? What's the method? Okay, let's try another one. The aim of this study is to determine when bacteria accounts differ under uh, the two conditions that we talked about. When? That's a question about time. It's a question about circumstances. Uh, it's a question about situations. So I would probably do something like uh, the aim of this study is to determine the circumstances in which bacteria accounts differ under these two conditions. Okay. I still use the WH word, but this is a relative clause. It's not a question. Okay. All right, so we've done it with a how and a when. Let's see what else we have here. All right. Which policy should be, should be implemented? Okay. Well, which policy, which policy, we could say, let's see, which policy to implement, uh, but that's, that's more of an indirect question. Um, oh, should, should, you're talking about what's, you know, what's better, what's worse, what, what thing you sh would recommend, what you wouldn't recommend. So we're talking about what you're judging to be good or best. So the best policy to implement, the best policy to implement, okay. Okay, what about now? Let's get creative. How long? The aim of this study is to determine how long advertising affects the sales of a particular product. Actually, this was the first uh, situation where I realized that some academic writing styles did not like to use WH words because uh, I had people rephrasing this as instead of this perfectly beautiful indirect question that you see on the screen right now, they figured out this. The aim of this study is to determine the length of time that advertising affects the sales of a particular product. And I was saying, why are you putting in so many extra words, the length of time that advertising affects? Why not just say, how long? It means the same thing. And the answer was, well, my advisor says, don't use how long, don't use question words. So this, this is, again, I, f I find this rather silly. Um, these both mean the same thing. They're both a question, except here you're being 
very open about it being a question, and here you're hiding the question in, in the details here. But if that's the writing style that uh, is required, well, there's how you do it. Okay, um, now let's try with who and what as a subject. If you have who or what as a subject, and the verb is, uh, is or are, there's an even easier way of making this an implicit question. You don't need to be creative. Just remove them both. The aim of this study is to determine the optimal engineering design method. Done. Let's try another one like that. The aim of this study is to determine what the characteristics of the Animas Basin in Colorado are. Now, in the indirect question video, you'll recall that we said the aim of this study is to determine what the characteristics are of the Animas Basin in Colorado. And that's one way to make it a little easier to read. But when we're talking about implicit questions, there's an even simpler option. Just take away the what and take away the are. The aim of this study is to determine the characteristics of the Animas Basin in Colorado. Okay, how about some yes-no questions? Uh, we're back to being creative here. So, the aim of this study is to determine whether alluvial diamond deposits can be analyzed as systematically as any other geological phenomenon. All right, well, what to do here? Uh, the aim of this study is to determine whether... Uh, gosh, uh, that means yes or no. Uh, can they or... or can they can or they cannot so this idea of possibility in the modal can you can actually use that the possibility of analyzing alluvial diamond deposits as systematically as any other geological phenomenon notice by the way the possibility of of requires the gerund form of the verb there so the possibility of analyzing alluvial diamond deposits. And that's the end.